Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She's fair. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good, this one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket and I'm not gonna pay for it. Who says you're not gonna pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Leo Gilbard is suing Ashton Brown in the amount of $1,000. Mr. Gilbard claims he hired Mr. Brown to work at his barber shop and says the defendant badmouthed his haircuts and poached his clients. All rise. Both of you raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Maybelline presiding. Thank you, you may be seated. The matter of Leo Gilbard versus Ashton Brown, you're suing him for $1,000, alleging that he stole your clients? Yes. Okay, tell me what happened. Well, Your Honor, I, I've known this young man for quite a while, about 18 years. I've been a barber for 18 years, and I used to cut his father and him as well when he was growing up. For the last eight years, I've owned my own business. Recently, I, I reconnected with him at my little brother's birthday party. Mm -hmm. And he told me he recently graduated barber college, said he was looking for a job. Decided to give him a shot. And, you know, it started out fine. For the first, you know, few weeks, he was coming in on time, cutting his regular customers. Then come to find his out... His regular customers? When did he get regular customers? The walk-ins. Oh, okay. He was, he was allotted the walk-ins. And when they came in, he was, you know, first, he had first dibs on them. Okay. During one, you know, one busy weekend, I decided to pass along one of my clients to him, just as a one-time take to get him started, get him a little extra experience. Next thing I know, he's speaking to my clients behind, but my clients behind my back, trying to get them to come to him. What do you mean speaking to him? How? He's whispering in their ear, telling them that my cuts are old and busted. If they want a new style, they need to come to him. Oh, at your barbershop. At my mm -hmm. shop. So I, I decided to step to him, you know, man to man, and have a talk with him. Told him, if you want to get your clients, you have to build them up yourself and not to take mine. So he took, he took, he didn't take too kindly to that, and he moved out and went to another shop. And that's when I found out that I had to get on social media and found out that he was messaging my people even more, telling them to come over to his new shop. And when I Googled our shop, I found a review online written by him, slandering our name. Mm. And as a result of that, what happened? As a result of that, my, my clientele had diminished, my barbershop's name was diminished, and I lost a lot of money in this business. So you're, so the $1,000 is loss of business? Yes. And how much do you charge for a haircut? $50 a haircut. Wow. That's a high price for a haircut. So what do you charge, new school? Okay, Your Honor, I charge $30 oh. and... Oh! Yes. Isn't your, aren't your cuts a little more fancy? They're more fancy and professional, while his is old school. The Caesar's been around for years and nobody's complained about it. Your Honor? Scissors? The Caesar. What is the Caesar? The dark Caesar. It's a low cut, uh, uh, the, the type of Call clippers that we fade. use. Yeah, exactly. You're, oh, okay, I got a little scissor. <laughs> Your Honor, he does his is the old way. I do it the professional way, the way the customer loves it. That's and why does it mean it's unprofessional? Because he does it with clippers. That doesn't mean it's unprofessional. Your Honor, you need to see some of his cut, and then you're going to decide if it's unprofessional. You or see if it's my not. cuts right there on that post. Then why did you go to his shop to work if you thought his cuts were so bad and you wanted, it according to the uh, the brief I read, you went there to learn from him so that he could teach you? You had worked there in the summers. You had worked there during the time you went barber school. You hung out. Uh, and you were learning from him, but now all of a sudden he's unprofessional. That's correct, Your Honor. You're absolutely right. But he's jealous because of I'm putting, I'm marketing my stuff on social media. Okay, but you're marketing yourself on social media. Why are you talking to his clients in their ear when they're sitting in the chair in his salon? What happened was he gave me one of his clients. The first agreement was once I come in, he's going to help me all the walk-ins that comes in. I'm going to get them. Right. But he never did that. He only gave me one walk in. And so that then was how it. did you get clients if he didn't give you any of them? I went out there. I was sh giving out my cards, but it was so hard. So I went to social media because I have so many followers. I went to social media to market myself as the new barber in town. All of my barbers drum up their hold, own business. Hold on a second. 
I went, I went there and got, you know, as the new barber in town, I had to, you know, market myself on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. And, and so that's how I got what, my... What did you say in this marketing? What I said on the marketing is, if you want a fresh cut, if you want something that is in bulk right now, and if you want a professional cut, just come to Barber Cut, and I'm going to cut your hair. I put in my phone number and everything, all my details. So you're saying you, on your social media on pages... So you said come to his salon. That's correct. Ask for you for a fresh cut. That's a correct. New, new style. That's correct. Okay. So did you start to get any clients coming in asking for you? Absolutely. I started getting clients, young professional clients coming to me. But for some reason, um, my clients are always complaining. The place smells and it's filthy and dirty. That's I his thought, young clientele, Your Honor. So if it was so nasty and so dirty and you're in there and you're working, why didn't you clean it? His clients are old. And when they come in, they smoke in the um, barbershop and stuff like that. That's not professional. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. If you like the old cuts, Stick to bars. Exactly, you Judge. Said old your... cuts, not old style. Okay. My style is traditional and vintage. He called it old and busted to my client's face. And later. And you went to his store and saw it. He didn't have to tell you that your grandma took that picture. You would already know that. My grandmother never told me that she took the picture. She just gave it to me as a present. Now you want the money. I want $2,000, which is what he told me he's already made. Really? Justice with Judge Maybelline. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Leo Gilbard, who is suing Ashton Brown for $1,000. Unless he's in a place that says no smoking allowed. Your Honor, but once new clients are coming in, once customers, if you want... Just tell me, did you rag him out on social media? Your Honor, I never did. All I said was when I Your left Honor, his shop. You see, I, 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 when I when I left his shop, all I said on social media is, if you want a new look, a new professional new look, and if you want a new school, just come to me. And if you want something old school, then go to him. His old clients that are so old, they wanted you. Your Honor, again, that's not true. I market myself online. Did you get any of his clients, his old clients? Do you have any of them? I don't have any of his old clients. Oh, okay. I gained my, cli my client through social media. Now, Mr. Uh, Gilbart, I understand, but this is not defamation. This is really not slanderous. He really is advertising for you as well. And he just simply says, if you like the old cuts, stick to barbs. Otherwise, head to new cuts. Well, we got the freshest, freshest cuts in the game. All he's saying is choose which hairstyle, you, I mean, which type of cut you want. The latest cuts are, you know, with all the lines and, you know, designs That's and true. all that stuff, and, you know, with a little twirls here in your head and, you know, all this kind of stuff that's going on. You know, maybe he said for a fresh cut, come to him. I totally understand For an uh, old style cut, your clients, he the didn't like the say fade. The phrase old style. He and just the says, I knew it "Listen, intense. listen. I'm reading what you gave me, sir. It did say old. If you like the old cuts, stick to barbs. Exactly, you Judge. Said old your cuts, not old style. Okay. My style is traditional and vintage. He called it old and busted to my client's face. Okay. You yourself said." that your clients like the older style cut, the more traditional cut, the fade, the short fade, that's what you said. Yes. So it can say, you can say older, you can say traditional, you can say old style, but point is, it was a different generational type of cut. Correct. He is dealing more with the younger people and the type of cut they like, which you and I both know is different. And that's all this ad says. If you want the old style, old cut, go to Barb's. That's advertisement. Barb's will give you traditional old school. If you want a fresher cut, come to me. That's not defamation. Because you testified that that's the type of cut you give. Hmm. Is the old traditional style cut. That was your words. Those were your words. I'm the one who gave him the opportunity to I put understand. his fresh cuts on the market. 
I understand that, but for And now he's promoting another okay. barbershop? For You're defamation, right? you have to prove that someone said something about you that was untrue, that it was malicious, and it was done to harm you. Now, because he's saying to people, I have a fresher haircut and style than Barb's cut, is not defamation. He can compare. That's called competition. This, that's the American way. And all he's simply saying is that if you want a more up-to-date, fresher look, then come to me. If you want to stay traditional, go to Barb's. And since you don't advertise on social, on social media, and he's on there and has a whole lot of followers, he's really advertising for you as well. For the people who would like your type of cut. That is not defamation. Now, whether he stole your clients or not, I don't know. If you gave him a client and the client happened to have liked the new cut that Mr. Brown gave him and wanted to stay with him as opposed to you, happens all the time. Women go into a hair salon, we, we go through that, and I'm looking up, every time I go to one, I'm looking at Mary's chair. Mary cuts that short hair. You know, when I'm deciding whether I want a new style, I look to see the different stylists and how they cut and how they style and how they do things. And every now and then, I'll go to another one. You know, that's competition. All right? All right. That is, that's the American way. Um, and it's not stealing. You know why? Because people have a, a right to choose who they want to be their barber. All right? All right. Okay, judgment for the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. I hope your cuts are as sharp as your lies. Sure. I'll be an old school client come back to you. Coming up. I told her uh, my grandfather and her grandmother had an affair. You never told Wait me that. Wait a minute, did you know her when she walked into your store? I did not know her, Your Honor. And how did she introduce herself? She didn't. Justice with Judge Maybelline. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Veronica Hawley is suing Marcel Turner in the amount of $2,000. Ms. Hawley claims Mr. Turner has profited from a photo taken by her late grandmother and says she deserves a portion of the proceeds. This is a matter of Veronica Holly versus Marcel Turner, and I understand you want him to pay you $2,000 that he's made off the sale of a photograph. Right. I'm suing for profits he made selling mugs and T-shirts off of my grandmother's picture. My daughter and I were from Oakland, and we ended up taking a trip to Martha, Texas. And we were walking around the town, and we walked into Mr. Turner's souvenir store. And on the shelves, he had mugs and T-shirts. This is the mug. And the mug had my grandmother's picture on the mug. It was, a picture of your grandmother? I, no, it was a, gra um, a picture that my grandmother took, I should say. That she took with what, a camera? With a camera, yes. He told me that it was his, the top selling item in his souvenir store. And he told you your grandmother took that picture? And that my grandmother took the picture. Yes. Your grandma, I take it, is deceased. My grandmother died six years ago, yes. Yeah. And before she died, she gave us a copy of the picture, which is right here. And it, when we went home, I wanted to make sure it was the same picture, and they match. If you went to his, if she had given you that picture yeah, before she died, and you went to his store and saw it, he didn't have to tell you that your grandma took that picture, you would already know that. Well, I didn't know that she actually took it with her camera. I knew I had the picture at home. My grandmother never told me that she took the picture. She just gave it to me as a present. Now you want the money. I want $2,000, which is what he told me he's already made. And then I wanted a percentage of the profit moving forward. Really? Coming up. My grandfather and her grandmother had an affair. Her grandmother and your grandfather. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Veronica Hawley, who is suing Marcel Turner for $2,000. Talk to me, Mr. Turner. I told her uh, my grandfather and her grandmother had an affair. 
when you never told wait me minute, that. did you know her when she walked into your store i did not know her your honor and how did she introduce herself she didn't she just uh so then why did you start talking about her grandmother and your grandfather i was telling her a story which is basically folklore and i knew this p particular photograph because of my grandfather and her grandmother and what did you know he told me that they had an affair and apparently they were on the beach that day. They saw this event happen. They saw the beach boat. I'm not sure who took the picture. It could have been my grandfather or it could have been her grandmother. You told me So that how'd you end up with the picture on the mugs? I had, I had a copy of the picture. Oh, so I you have the same copy that she had? Correct. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, if you didn't know who she was when she walked into your store, why would you start talking about her grandmother? He mentioned Sylvia Warner, and that is my grandmother. Okay, so but he didn't know that was your grandmother. He, he didn't was just know. telling you the story of Sylvia he, Warner. Yeah, Correct. and and as soon as he said her name, I said, "Oh yeah, that is my grandmother." And he also said, "And did that, you know his grandfather?" No, I didn't know. So I you didn't, didn't know about his grandfather? I didn't know that they had an affair. No. And you didn't know that he had a copy of the same picture. No, I knew nothing about, uh, yeah, it was all new news to me. The pictures got on the mug, and what else, what else did you say? T-shirts in your store? Because you had the same picture, and you had the mugs and T-shirts made from that picture? Uh, correct. I got that picture from my grandfather. That's what I'm saying, and you had this product made? Correct. Yes, Your Honor. And now you told her how much money you were making from it, so now you want it. You want the profit. Well, I called him and pretended to be a printing company, and said that I would give him good deals on the making of new mugs and new t-shirts. And he told me that he had made $2,000 year to date on the mugs. Judge Maybelline's verdict when Justice with Judge Maybelline returns. Promotional consideration provided by. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. So how many years have you been selling it? Uh, approximately 20 years. I do not know how much money I've made. I, it, was, uh, it was a guesstimate. I you've been know. selling those mugs and you've been selling mugs and t-shirts using that picture for 20 years and you've made $2,000? I make f at the most five cents a mug uh, off of each item. I don't make much money off of them at all. Well, you know how many you have produced at one time? I do. However, I haven't kept track of how many I've sold in the past 20 years. You think now he's supposed to just, after you show up, See something on his shelf, and now he's supposed to just turn over all his money to you. And you spent maybe $30,000, you know, having it printed over the years, but I'm not going to give you one penny for printing it, but I want every profit you make. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You see how ridiculous that sounds? Right. Oh. Judgment for the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. I just... Mm. Ooh, people are really hurting trying to make money, I tell you. Judgment for the defendant. Case Thank dismissed, you, which Honor. means you can leave. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. I know I didn't owe you anything. I was just telling a story. I felt like it was my grandmother's picture. I should have gotten something. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.